the house of the Lord. You're not in the house of the Lord, but you are wherever you may be. You are with the Lord. And um, I just thank the Lord, regardless of where we may be geographically, uh, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I just thank the Lord this morning that the Holy Spirit resides within us. And even where two agree concerning anything, uh, the Lord will do it. And where two are together in his name, he is in their midst. The Lord desires to do some amazing things today. And the Lord desires for there to be a powerful work done even today and moving forward. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday, 2,000 years ago roughly, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and there was a move that began 2,000 years ago as the Holy Spirit led and drove the body of Christ, individuals, to do the will of the Father and that Jesus' name would be proclaimed. Hallelujah. Even as we are here this morning, in Niagara Falls anyways, the sun is shining. What a beautiful day outside. And I just thank the Lord that as beautiful as it is outside, that within our hearts and within our lives, Jesus is shining. I pray to God that that is the case for you this morning, that Jesus is just so uh, alive within you, and, and you are alive within the Lord, even as you abide in him and he abides in you, that there is a work being accomplished this morning in your life and through your life and that there is a, a, a bright shining of who you are. Jesus is the light of the world. And we, that we would be the light, lights, just that Jesus would be shining from us brightly in this time, in this day, in this, in this age. As bright as the sun is shining, we are living in darkness, as in, in a dark time, in a dark age, even as we see the coming of the Lord. However... I thank God that it doesn't take too much light to dispel the darkness and it's dispelled easily. And this morning that there would be a dispelling of darkness. And before we get into the message this morning, uh, I just want to, that we as a church would pray for Joey. Joey, um, some of you may not, uh, not know him. Uh, Shandell and Joey came to the church just back in the fall, and we have not had too many in-house services, but uh, uh, the Lord has done a beautiful work uh, in the family, and uh, however, uh, just sh recently, Joey contracted COVID and is currently uh, in, in the hospital. He was taken. He's, there's been coma that has been induced. He is on a ventilator. His lungs uh, are, are filling up. He's having difficulty breathing. We need for a miracle to be done. We need for healing to come. So as a church body, I, I, I would have you pray. I know the elders have been praying. We've had the prayer chain uh, uh, it initiated and ignited to pray. And I just want to thank all of you for praying at this point. And Chandel, even as you would hear, uh, know that the church is praying for you, for your family, and especially for Joey. So let's just pray together at this time. Lord, we just thank you that you are sovereign. And Lord, uh, as you walked on this planet 2,000 years ago, they brought the sick to you, and you healed them all. And Lord, I just thank you that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, you continue to do a work of healing. You, do, you continue to do things that are, are impossible for us, that would be even impossible, impossible for the doctors. And Lord, we thank you for health care. But Lord, there are things that even the health care can't do. Lord, even as they would attempt. Lord, we pray now that there would be a miracle that would be done, a work of healing that would come in Jesus' name. We rebuke the things of COVID. We rebuke the, the, the virus. We rebuke that which is in the lungs. We rebuke it and we command it to go. That which is of oppression, that which is of the enemy, we bind now in Jesus' name. And we pray and we speak healing to come to our brother in Jesus' name. 
Lord, we cover him with your precious blood. Lord, we pray a covering over the family at this time that there would be a peace of heart and mind in Jesus' name. By your stripes, we have wholeness, we have wellness, and we have peace because of the chastisement that you went under, Lord. We can have peace. And I pray the peace of God to come even now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray that there will be a testimony given of your power and of your might in Joey's life and through Joey and, and Shandell, Lord, at this time, Lord, we just commit them into your hands in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been going through a series, and if you haven't caught those in the past, the last seven weeks, the series has been called Anointed, the Anointed Series, and it's about the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us. And today, the title, One Accord, One Place. Anointed, One Accord, One Place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I want to read from Acts chapter 2 from verses 1 to 4. I read it earlier as we started the service. I want to read it again. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. We thank God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it's amazing that even as the Holy Spirit fell upon them, there was a, that, that sound and that noise, and, and people came running wondering, what is the sound? And even as they came, they, they heard them speaking in languages, different languages. And there was a powerful thing that happened at that, po that moment because Peter stood up. And even as they, they obviously must have come out of that house, and even as he stood up to preach, he preached in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the man that had denied Jesus three times before Jesus was, was crucified, before he was tr tried, or even as he was tried, Peter, the one who had denied him, now spoke boldly of Jesus Christ and him crucified. He preached without compromise. He, despite the mocking that was taking place, even at that time, we can read in Acts chapter 2, there, there was, there was a, a, a questioning. There was a, a wonder, what's going on here? And there was even a mocking. But that day... Regardless of whether it was a mocking, a wonder, or a curiosity, the gospel of Jesus Christ was preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. In verse 23 of Acts chapter 2, it says, Him, Jesus, being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, having crucified and put him to death. That had just happened 50 days prior as Jesus went to the cross and died for you and died for me. And here Peter is preaching boldly in the power of the Holy Spirit, and he is preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified, whom God raised, raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, and here Peter, he's preaching. This is what pre Peter was preaching. He says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. And this is, he's quoting from Psalm 16, verses 8 to 11. And the Lord, he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make full, make me full of joy in your presence. And this is the Lord Jesus speaking even as he, it was recorded a thousand years before in Psalm chapter 16 of the fact that Jesus would not be left in Hades, that he would rise. And Peter explains this in verse 29. He says, men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he, Jesus, would raise, or God would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. That Jesus would be lifted up. He would be exalted. He would be given all power and authority. 
He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. The, David wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit a thousand years before the Psalm, Psalm 16, a song that was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, speaking of the fact that Jesus would raise from the dead. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Jesus had been raised, and for 40 days he was on the planet. And he, was, he had revealed himself to the disciples. At one point, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, it says to even, uh, to, to even 500 in one time, at one moment of time, 500 people together saw him. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. We need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like 2,000 years ago because the gospel of Jesus Christ needs to be preached. And David... or. Peter continues, for David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, and he's, once again, Peter is now quoting from Psalm 110, verse 1, the Lord said to my Lord, so the Father says to the Son, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And I want you to know at this time, the Lord desires for a church that is without spot or wrinkle, a glorious church, that there would be a powerful work accomplished at this time and at this, in, this, in, in this city, that there would be a work accomplished in the power of the Holy Spirit, that the light of Jesus Christ would shine and that the darkness would be removed and that there would be a pro proclaiming of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord said... To my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. That the darkness, that the, the, the gates of hell will be pushed back, would be broken and pushed back even from our lives, from our homes, and from this city, from this province, from Canada, that the, the, the gates of hell would be pushed back and that the, 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 the kingdom of God would expand forcefully at this time. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ, the one that was crucified even as he died for our sins. He, he was buried and he rose again. He overcame death. He overcame hell and the dominion of sin in our lives. He overcame the enemy. He is Lord. He is Christ, the anointed one. And that we would proclaim Jesus Christ. Now, when they heard this, the thousands that were gathered there that day, they heard this message, and it says they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? I want you to know at this time, as we are anointed in the power of the Holy Spirit, as we preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, whether you are preaching or speaking it to one person or we speak to many, whether we are face to face or we are online, that there will be a proclaiming of Jesus Christ and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that men and women will say, what shall we do? What shall we do? How can we have salvation? And Peter said to them, repent, that we would not compromise the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is sin that causes us to be separated from God. One sin causes us to be separated at this time that we would be able to say, you know what? You need to repent. You need to turn from your sins. You need to turn. The direction you are headed in is to destruction. It is to an eternity apart from God that you would turn and you would be saved. Let everyone, not just a repentance, but a believing in Jesus Christ and him crucified, and there would be an, a, a public confession. It says, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because of the remission of sins. The fact you've been, your sins have been remitted. They've been, you've been cleansed. You've been washed clean. And there is a public confession. Let there be a public confession of the fact that you have been made whole. You have made clean. Even as you would be baptized in the name of Jesus as a sign that you believe in the fact that Jesus died for you. He was buried and he rose again, just as we would go through the thing of water baptism. 
And it says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you will receive. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you receive the earnest of the Spirit. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit comes into your life the moment you give your, your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. We need the Lord Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit that the will of the Father would be done in these last days. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who have who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. The promise of salvation and the promise of the Holy Spirit upon our lives and in our lives. You know, we have a good Father. As children of God, we have a heavenly Father that loves us so much. You know, I think back in my life as I was growing up. My dad was a good father. And dad, if you're listening at this time, dad, thanks for being a good father. You know what? My dad wasn't perfect, but he was my father. He was there. He provided for us. He cared for us. He taught us. He disciplined us. He loved us. He was a man of God. He is a man of God. Just the other day, even as my dad is not in the same place physically as he was when I was a little boy, and even as I was putting my dad to bed, just this past week, he, his thing was, hey, can I pray at this time? I want to pray blessing. And he was saying again and again and again, over and over, he was just saying how good it was that we were family, how good the family was the one that he was father over, how good it was. And his heart, even as I was putting him to bed, was I want to pray blessing. I want to pray blessing. A man of God, a man of God, he was there. He was always there for us. And the thing about my father was when he promised something, he followed through. When he promised, listen, I, I can remember, like on a day like today, where the sun is shining and, and it is warm outside. And so the, those summer days, I could remember at different points during the summer, my dad would say, hey, you know what? Let's go out and work. Let's work hard. There's things to do in the garden. Maybe it was to cut the grass, whatever it was. And we would go, whether it was, uh, uh, God forbid, to pick beans. But what, if, you know, even if it was picking beans, bushels of beans and and or or weeding the garden whatever it was he says let's work hard and and then when we're finished working we're going to go to the beach and so us little guy us guys we would after all the work was done and even as a, as a a young boy i knew what it was to work and to to even to work hard as a, as a little guy but he promised, hey, we're going to the beach. And we would, we would get the, the canoe and we would put it on top of the, the, the rack on the car. And so it would be strapped down and we'd fill up with uh, the, the car with what, all the different items that we needed for going to the beach. And we would go to the beach. And, and because my dad promised we would go to the beach and we would have that time. And we did. And we would love those days where... Even if there was a hard work that needed to be done, we knew the promise was if we said we were, going, he, we were going to the beach, we were going to the beach. I want you to know there is a promise of our Heavenly Father that he gives to us. In Luke 24, Jesus said, this is not just any man. This is Jesus himself. He, he says in verse 44, he says, then he, and he said to them, to his disciples, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And we quoted 
We read from the Psalms this morning, even in the New Testament as Peter preached. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scriptures. And I just want to read that there's a promise that is going to be spoken. And the reason for the promise, this is the reason for the promise. And he said to them, thus it is written, whether Psalm 22, whether it's Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, or whether it's Isaiah 53 and other passages, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, beginning at and that uh, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So it should start in Jerusalem, and it did 2,000 years ago, and it spread out from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, and then right out, right to the point of today, not just geographically at that time and in years following, but even to this time, 2,000 years later, here we are because of what began 2,000 years ago. What? That repentance, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, in Jesus' name, to all nations. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. It's a promise. It was a guarantee. And that it would happen, it happened. We read of it in Acts chapter 2. The promise of the Father. Listen, if you have not been filled with the, the, the Holy Spirit, that you would be filled. Yes, you have the earnest. You have a portion. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. But that you would have the same Spirit that was on Jesus without measure upon you at this time. That the gospel of Jesus Christ would be preached without that preaching. That there would be a remission of sins and life coming through the message of the cross, people cannot get saved. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the boldness of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> you know that, that I preach. The Lord has put upon me strongly and, and a weight upon me that I would preach and continue to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. Without that, there is not a remission of sins. There is not a, a life that can come without the preaching of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. And this message has not just been preached in this place, but in this past year, over the course of the last year, it is going out. The message is going out. And it's going out past these four walls. In fact, it is coming right to you at this time. The message of the cross, Jesus Christ and him crucified, we have expanded and we have used the means at this point that the message of Jesus would get out, that the message would get out to us through us personally, maybe face to face with somebody, but that it would get out even over the media and our, our social, the social media, listen, to share the message, that the message of Jesus Christ would be shared at this time in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Listen, we have been open. It doesn't matter whether it's the first wave, the second wave, the third wave, whatever wave, it doesn't matter. The church, a glorious church, will continue to move forward powerfully. Even here at this church, we have remained open. There may have been restrictions but we have continued on, and the message of Jesus Christ has gotten out. We want to continue. And at this time, I just want to thank all of you that have already given towards the studio. Close to $1,000 has, has already come in towards the studio. We need, we need to have you continue to give at this point in time. And not just studio. If you can mark for evangelism, we want to go not just regarding the studio, but for evangelism, the message of Jesus needs to get out. And so as you would give, give towards evangelism. Give, just market evangelism, that we there would be literally thousands, tens of thousands of dollars that we can do a work that Jesus Christ would be proclaimed at this time powerfully. The Lord desires for the word to get out, the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified to get out. And the promise of the Father is that there would be an anointing upon us. There would be an empowering of the Holy Spirit upon us because he has promised it. Hallelujah. I want to read again. He says, thus it is written, and thus it is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead 
the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The message of Jesus Christ and him crucified is getting out. I want you to pray, church. Just the other day, I've been waiting. The Lord has put a message on my heart that it would go first to the, the, the pastors of the city. That was already done three weeks, three and a half weeks ago. The second thing was that, that there would be a going to the mayor, and I was waiting for the right time. And just the other day, uh, I th believe it was on Friday, Thursday or Friday, there was a green light given. I knew the Lord was saying now. And so there's been a, a, a call out to, to set up an appointment with the mayor. I want you to pray. God desires to do powerful things in this city at this time, powerfully, beyond anything we could possibly imagine. That we would shine in the darkness. The Lord put on my heart, even as I waited on him, I said, Lord, what is our direction for 2021? He says that we would shine in the darkness. We would be shining in the darkness in Jesus' name, moving forward boldly by his spirit. Boldly moving forward by his spirit. We need to receive the promise of the Father. It is a gift. It's a given. Listen, you know what? We could have worked hard. In the morning, as my dad said, hey, we're going to the beach, and then gone off and did her own things. And my dad would have been, well, aren't we going to the beach? Listen, I don't want you to be preoccupied doing your own things. But then you say, I want the promise of the Father. I want what he has for me. I want to do what he would have me do, that Jesus Christ would be preached that there would be a repentance that take, would take place and remission of sins for those that are in darkness, that have no hope, and that are dead. They're heading on a highway that is leading to destruction, to an eternity apart from God. We need to declare the message in the power of the Holy Spirit and the promise of the Father. Our Heavenly Father is there for us, that there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit for us. There is the Holy Spirit for us. In Luke chapter 11, even as the disciples came to Jesus and they said, hey, uh, John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. Can you teach us to pray? And we have the Lord saying, hey, pray like this. In this manner, pray. And, and so we have the Lord's prayer. And, and f following that, see, prayer is communication with God. It's when, we have, when you have communication with somebody, you have relationship with them. Where there's no communication, listen. If you don't have communication or proper communication with others, relationship will deteriorate. And sometimes it can deteriorate very quickly. The heart of God is that there would be relationship with him. And we do that through the, the aspect of communication. And so prayer, he says pray like this, it's us speaking to God. But the Lord God desires to speak to us as well, that it's back and forth. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray. But there was another thing that he, he, he mentioned after that, as you read through uh, Luke chapter 11, he talks about the aspect of persistence, to persist in, in the things that, that, you would, that are perhaps even promised, that you would persist. Hey, there was a promise given. I want the promise. And in Luke 11 verse 9, it says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son asks for a bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If I ask my father, my earthly father, for, for a bread, for bread, hey, Dad, I'm hungry. Can we have some, something to eat? Hey, can we have some bread? I'd love to have some bread with some lunch meat and whatever. He would say, hey, hey, here's a stone. If I ask for a fish to have, hey, let's have fish and chips. Let's have some, ooh, love my mom's fish and chips. If we ask, hey, can we have fish and chips? We wouldn't get a serpent instead of the fish and chips. Serpents and fish or serpents and, and chips? I don't think so. We would have fish, fish and chips. Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? A absolutely not. 
Listen, these are our earthly fathers doing good things. If you then, being evil, the contrast between God, uh, man and God is there. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your father, and even uh, the unbeliever, the godless man, when a son or daughter asks for something, so many that are even that are unbelievers would give because they love their children. Well, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The promise of the Father, even as we would ask, yes, I want the promise, Father. I want the Holy Spirit in my life. We need the Holy Spirit. And we talked about this over the course of the last seven weeks. We need an anointing upon us in these last days. There's a work that needs to be done by his Spirit through you, through me, through us individually and through us corporately together. There's a work that needs to be done by the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants to pour out upon us in these last days. In Joel chapter 2, and it's interesting that, that Peter, as Israel was still a nation, he quotes from Joel. And then for 2,000 years, in A.D. 70, Israel was no longer a nation. And so this passage, Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 32, does not take in effect or is not in effect during those almost 2,000 years from AD 70 till 1948. There was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit 100, 120 years ago. In fact, our, our denomination began with 12 individuals, and even as they were were told about the outpouring or the, the, the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they began to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and the church, our church, as it began in 1886, uh, not this personal church, but our denomination in 1886, since then, there are more than 7, 8 million members, probably another 10 or 15 million adherents that belong to the, to the church of God all because of the moving of the Holy Spirit. And that's just one Pentecostal denomination. You say, well, how come there's different denominations, and especially Pentecostal denominations or churches? It's because there's an opening. The denomination doesn't matter so much as it is the fact that they were open to the Holy Spirit and the, the promise of the Father. We need the Holy Spirit in the last days. In Joel 2.28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward, after Israel becomes a nation again, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. I want you to know that I'll tell you right now, the Holy Spirit needs to be poured out now, and the Holy Spirit will continue to be poured out and move powerfully even during the tribulation. So even as the church is caught up, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, and I pray to God that you are, your faith is not in yourself and your own righteousness, but it is in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, His blood shed for you. If that is where your faith is, that is where we have the right standing before God. We are made whole and we are cleansed and we are washed and we we remain in the state of where we should be as we ought to be in righteousness before God because Jesus' righteousness is upon us. And I want you to know that even as the church is caught up when the trumpet sounds, that the Holy Spirit will continue to move powerfully. There are going to be many thousands, perhaps even millions upon millions saved after the church is caught up and the Holy Spirit continues to move. Let me read it again. And I shall show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, beginning with the, the, the rapture of the church, the catching up of the saints, and also the second coming of the Lord where he will actually touch down and be on this planet for a thousand years. And during those seven years, there will be many saved. It will cost them their life. It says the cries went up to the Lord even as they are beheaded. And I can see it in this day and age. There is such a wickedness and evil that, that would come against the church and is coming against the church even now. We see it. 
when you have pastors that are being uh, 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 incarcerated, chained, not just their hands, but their feet, and, and chained and brought in. This is in Canada. This is just happening in the last number of months. We are living in the last days, and the Lord desires to do a powerful work before he comes. There is a wickedness, but I thank God that the power of God, the Holy Spirit, and the light of Jesus dispels the things of darkness as we shine brightly in these last days. In the power of the Holy Spirit, the sun shall be turned in darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of that great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. And it began 2,000 years ago as the Holy Spirit was poured out in Jerusalem on those 120. And it's continued on 2,000 years later. Here we are, praying, God, we need your spirit. Fill me with your spirit personally. Lord, pour your spirit out on us as a church and ac across the body of Christ here in Niagara Falls that we would be a witness at this time like never before. Pray for me. Pray for me as I go to the mayor, as I share the word the Lord has given to me at this time back in, on March 12th, a word for the mayor, and who knows how far beyond that. The Lord wants to do a powerful work. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know what? I don't know exactly how, uh, and the extent, I don't know the extent of what the Lord wants to do, but I know it is beyond what we can imagine. I've shared this vision. It says that your young men shall see visions. I'm getting older, but the Lord gave me a vision years ago. And I, I remember, I can see it vividly right now. Even as I'm speaking to you, I have that vision. And I can see thousands of people down by the falls and the gospel being preached. I saw that years ago, 15 years ago, the Lord put it on my heart. Another vision that the Lord gave me years ago, and it was dark outside, and I was standing across the street where the, around where the fry truck is, looking across, and all of a sudden, the entire church, as I look, the entire church, the roof is on fire, not being consumed like the burning bush, the presence of God here, and even as it was on fire, there was a light that shone out the top of the, the church. I, still, I can see it right in my mind's eye right now. It has not waned one bit. And I see a shaft of light coming out that we would truly be the lighthouse. We're not called the lighthouse for, for no reason. It is a, a place, even as Jesus is lifted up, that the light is lifted up, the light of Jesus Christ, that people will see and come to know Jesus Christ through us. This is only a building. But there was, it was this aspect of those that would be here, that those that are here, this is the church that the Lord has entrusted me with, that we would do the work of the Lord at this time. I don't know. Maybe it is. Listen, by June 14th, so in a few weeks' time, we still cannot gather here, but they, they are not putting a restriction on how many people can gather outside. And I truly believe the Lord would have us do services outside, get outside of these four walls to be forced out. It's summertime. The weather is f good. Can you imagine wherever we may be, whether it's here on this property or outside, maybe we have to buy a generator. Maybe that's something that, that can run a sound system and that, we, that the gospel of Jesus Christ Christ would be preached, that Jesus Christ would be exalted and lifted up this summer. If, if things don't open up, they're saying that between each different phase, according to how many people are vaccinated, etc., three weeks' time. But by June 14th already, there is the opportunity for us to get together again. And so I'm, I'm going to be hearing back uh, early this next week uh, from our city uh, enforcement officer, Regarding as I was in touch with him, speaking with him regarding opening up and all those kinds of things, already talking to him. 
And uh, so he's getting back to me early next week regarding the extent of that. Listen, there's a work that needs to be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Above all, we need the Holy Spirit, the power upon us. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We need to be driven by the Holy Spirit. We need to be moved in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit for ministry. This thing I mentioned uh, weeks ago, and I mentioned a few times already, the anointing is charisma. Anything smeared on or you, uh, ointment, usually prepared by the Hebrews from oil and aromatic herbs, anointing was the inaugural ceremony for priests. So as the priests were anointed to begin ministry, as the very first time, inaugural means to begin, very first time, there was an anointing that was upon them, and they then, that oil was put, put upon them, and they began ministry. We need the oil of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us. We are also priests, kings and priests unto the Lord. In Isaiah 10, verse 27, it says, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The burdens that people carry, the, the, the chains that, that, that yoke them and, and bind them and control them, that people have at this time, whatever, whatever chain it may be, broken by the anointing of the Holy Spirit as we proclaim Jesus Christ in Jesus' name, that those things, those burdens would be lifted off of people, those chains would be broken, the yoke would be broken because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us. You say, Pastor, well, that's Old Testament. Let me just say this. In, New, in the New Testament, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Listen. Listen. It says, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. We have seen, in the last number of months, we have seen many Antichrists that are totally opposed to Jesus Christ and the proclamation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified to the point where they are incarcerating. Shame. This is a Christian country, supposedly. And the things that are being done in the name of health or whatever it may be is a shame, is an abomination before God at this time, is a detriment to Canada. And those that are involved in this, I pray for your souls that you would be saved, that you would have the forgiveness of Jesus Christ come upon you as you would repent. For those officers, those that are, are just saying, well, we're following orders. You would say, you know what, I don't want to do this. You have discretion as police officers to say, you know what, I don't think this is the right thing to do. You have the choice to make when you, when you feel it's not the right thing to do. It's because there's antichrists that have come that are totally opposed to the things of the Lord. They say, well, I, I, man, I look forward to shutting people those that would proclaim men and women of God. I want to shut them down. I want to shut down the churches. We know that it is the last hour. If you don't realize it's the last hour, I'm saying to you, with all love, get your head out of the sand. Look around. Look around. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Even within the church. I'll tell you, we need to be in one accord at this time. One place and one accord. Listen, there should be no room or place for difference where we're not on the same page. I recognize there might be differences, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But we need to be in one accord in one place at this time. Look at verse 20, 1 John 2, 20. It says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is, uh, is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. We will acknowledge Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the Holy Spirit, we have the anointing of the Holy One upon us and should have it upon us that we can go out and proclaim Jesus Christ, that we would not deny Jesus Christ, his name, but that we would proclaim his name at this time because it is in his name and through his name that people are saved and can have life and have forgiveness of sins and to have a hope and to have a purpose and to have an eternity with God. Praise God. Jesus, he moved and operated in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Luke 4, it says in verse 14, it says, then Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding region. Praise God. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified by all. And even as he came to the synagogue, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Prophesied 800 or 600, 700 years, 700 years before by Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me as he opened the book and the scrolls. And he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh, Holy Spirit. Father, pour out your spirit upon us because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. There are so many that are without hope. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. It is now. It is now that we would move in the op and, and, and operate in the power of the Holy Spirit, that we would do that work that he would have us do that Jesus Christ would be lifted up to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now is the time of the Lord that his name would be lifted up, that he would be exalted, that many would come to know Jesus. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and he spoke to them. One of the last things he said, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Matthew focused on the kingship of Jesus Christ. Kingship is all about authority, and he's saying all authority has been given to me. I'm above all. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Jesus Christ desires for things to be accomplished in these last days. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I just want to say this. Two different people at two different times separated by several years, by years, had the same vision. They didn't know each other. They hadn't heard anything. Both of them here in this church, one or as they came to the church, both of them, the one lady, she says, Dave, I saw people coming across the street, from across the street, being baptized. There were rows and rows of people coming, and they were being baptized in the river across from our church. Another person said, I saw them, they were in lines coming from the trees. Just this last summer, I recognized exactly where they were being baptized, not at the boat launch, across their street, but over some. And I saw the exact place where they would be baptized. I didn't think, I was looking, where can we baptize? And across by the, the trees. And last summer, I saw it. The Lord desires to do a powerful work at this time, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So not just 2,000 years ago, to the end of the age, to the end of time as we know it. We are in the last days, and the Lord is saying, I will be with you. I am with you the power of the Holy Spirit upon you, and I am with you right to the end of the age. The Lord is sovereign. All power and authority is his, and he is commanding us, and he's saying, I want you to go out in the power of the Holy Spirit to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the, Holy, in the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that they would be taught things. And I'm just saying at this point, we are looking, and even this morning as I was going over this, I'm feeling led that so many of the, the things that are taught, the, the programs that are taught, even as we get this studio together, that they will be taught and available online so that 
whether we can gather here for uh, the new believers course or not, it will be online and all those lessons can come up and you, they can be uh, uh, listened to and, and grabbed a hold of whether we are able to gather together or not. They need to go online. And so, folks, you are having a part in this, even as you would give. Give, I say again, give for evangelism, for evangelism, and pray for the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon us at this time. He says, I will be with you. The Lord is with us at this time. Praise God. And I want to end off with this last part. This is what I've entitled this message today, Anointed, One Accord in One Place. It says in Acts 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. All of them, together. It's interesting, as you look at these words in the Greek, so I, I was looking at, at the different words here, and some of them are exactly what you'd figure them to be. But when it came to one, uh, one accord, one place, and even the, the, the aspect of being together in one accord, in one place, there was this intertwining that, that separately, it, it didn't quite fit separately, but to, it was this enmeshing of this phrase. One accord in one place. These, these words are, are, are blending together like synergy. You, you, you put different things together, they, make, they come together and it makes something new with one accord in one place. And I just want to say this, that as we get together, we would be in one accord together. Not our will, not my will, Father, but your will be done. That you would not say, this is my idea, and so my idea should be done. No, no, no. It's not Dave. It's not Dave's idea. Pastor Dave, his idea. Lord, I don't want my ideas done. I want your will done. Listen to me, folks. To those that are part of Lighthouse, I don't want my will done. I want the will of the Father to be done. His will. And so part of it, part of it has been, Lord, I've been obedient as you have spoken to me. You say, Pastor, do you have it all together? I don't have it all together. Are you perfect, Pastor? I'm not perfect. You know I'm not perfect. But God uses imperfect individuals just like you and just like me. And even as he would speak, as he entrusted me over this flock at this time, I do not want to just bring any message. I want to bring a message from the Lord. And so I speak what I hear from the Father as the Holy Spirit unctions my spirit and there's a, 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 a coming together of, of what he would say within me to share with you at this time. Not my will. Lord, your will be done. Listen to, to me, you, individuals, all of you that are listening, brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters, not our will. Let his will be done at this time. That we would be under the submission of the lordship of Jesus Christ. And I want to I make a point at this, at this time. There's a number of you out there at this point, and I'm, I'm, I'm directing my comments to you. You are saved, but Jesus is not Lord in your life. You are saved, but Jesus is not Lord in your life, and I'll tell you, your life is all over the place. Listen to me. And I say this, I say this sternly at this point in time in, in rebuke and in correction, and in, in that you would get to a place of submission to Jesus Christ as Lord in your life. Because I'll tell you right now, you are seated on the throne of your own life, and it's a mess. Say, Pastor, do you have to raise your voice? Say, that's, I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry that the Satan is duping you. Satan is robbing from you because you've allowed a foothold because Jesus is not Lord in your life. You are. Not my will, your will be done. I submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We need to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That his, the authority that he has, all authority has been given to him. 
all power, as we've been studying on Wednesday nights, that he would have preeminence. He is preeminent, but he is saying, I give you choice that I can be preeminent in your life. That you would say, Lord, forgive me for my selfishness and my pride that says I need to be in control. Or maybe it's your ignorance. I don't know what it is. But I know this. There are some of you out there, it is your will being accomplished, and your life is a turmoil, and it's impacting those around you, and it's impacting your entire family, and those that would know you, it's impacting them negatively. Once again, I say this as, as rebuke, and I say this for correction's sake. I say this for uh, edification's sake, for exhortation to you, in all love, because what the Lord has for you, listen to me, what the Lord has for you is so good. Because we have a heavenly Father that has good plans and purposes for you. And it would desire to work out in your life and in your family, in your home now. Don't let the enemy lie to you. That you would be submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that there would be an anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you. That we would allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. It's interesting that 12 times the word one accord is used in the New Testament. 12 times. 10 times are in the book of Acts. To be in one accord. 10 times just in the book of Acts. The Acts are the Acts of the Apostles and the believers, the followers of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the book of Acts is. And it, it, there is no finish to the book. If you read chapter 28, there's no finish to that book because it's continued on and it's being written even today, 2,000 years later. To be in one accord. I want you to know, to one accord, in one accord does not mean that we are all the same. <laughs> you know it. You are completely different than the person next to you. You know it. We are unique. Each one of us is different. And the, the Lord desires the uniqueness of who we are, each one of us, to be together. When you look at the 12 disciples, each one was different. It says, and yet they came in with one accord in one place. They were with one accord in one place, so there was a submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We know that because he said, I want you to wait until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And as once that power of the Holy Spirit is upon you, you will be witnesses unto me wherever you go. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world, of the earth. They obeyed Jesus. They were there waiting. They were in one accord despite the differences that they had. We must be of one mind in one accord when it comes to the things of the Lord. We need not to submit to man but we need to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. All power has been given to him, and we need to submit to that authority and power in our lives and that the, the Holy Spirit would be able to work on us and through us powerfully. The Lord desires for the promise of the Father to be poured into our lives. The Lord desires to fill us with the Holy Spirit and power. The Lord desires for beautiful things to happen to you and through you to minister to others. In fact, the beauty of the 120 in the upper room was amazing. They came together with one accord, having different personalities, different views, perhaps, different ideas, different passions, different talents, different skills, different vision, different goals. But they came together in one accord. Listen, the church needs to be that way now. Some of you have different views some of you have different ideas. Some of you have different thoughts of what should be or shouldn't be. But I'm telling you at this point, church, brothers and sisters, we need to be one in one accord when it comes to the things of the Lord at this time. That His will would be accomplished. That the gospel of Jesus Christ would be shared in the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the meaning of the word one accord. And so even as the, the ones that were versed in Greek, and this phrase, this, and they were together in one, in one accord, in one place. 
Listen to the meaning here. So they say a, a unique Greek word used 10 of its 12 New Testament occurrences in the book of Acts helps us understand the uniqueness of the Christian community. We are all so different. And the beautiful thing is even being flawed. We haven't arrived yet. The Lord is saying, man, I want to use you in the power of the Holy Spirit despite your flaws, despite your weaknesses, despite your past, despite your strengths, whatever it may be. It helps us, this unique Greek word, one accord, helps us to understand the, the uniqueness of the Christian community, homo thumidon, or hamoth thumidon, is the word accord, one accord. It's a compound of two words, meaning to rush along in unison. To rush along in unison. Isn't it interesting? This, for this year, 2021, and there's been, there has been a work that's being done despite the fact that we've only been to church for about a month and a bit. But church has not stopped. The word has continued to move out. But the word given last year for this year is this. Shining in the darkness, in Jesus' name, boldly moving forward by his spirit. Rushing along in unison, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to the image that is created by this word. The image, and this is the, 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 those that are, are theologians and are scholars of the language, of the Greek here. The image is almost musical. A number of notes are sounded which, while different, harmonize in pitch and tone. As the instruments of a great concert, under the direction of a concert master, so the Holy Spirit blends together the lives of the members of Christ's church. If it wasn't for all of you, we could not do what we do. I could not do, the church could not do what it does. I couldn't do what I do, even preaching here this morning. I would be preaching to an empty room if it wasn't for the people that have allowed, have the skills and the talents to do what they do, that the message is getting out. We need to function together under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Each type of instrument, each one a different instrument, a different sound, a different tone, different notes, blending together at this time. We need to blend together to be in one accord under the grand concert master, the Holy Spirit, that the will of the Father, the authority of Jesus Christ, we have the authority of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is, is orchestrating everything, putting it together. Folks, the differences that we have that would separate us need to be removed. Listen, if you have ought against someone, if you have ought against me, listen, once again, I'm not perfect. But we need to move together despite differing, differing views or opinions. We have our own views or opinions, but let us operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't want us to be in discord. He wants us to be in one accord. Let me read again. The image is almost musical. A number of notes are sounded which are, while different, harmonize in pitch and tone as the instruments of a great concert under the direction of a concert master so the holy spirit blends together the lives of members of christ's church several years ago uh, i went to toronto the girls uh, uh got some tickets uh and th there were reduced prices and so we went to roy thompson hall in toronto um and a place you could probably see it a few thousand people, if not more, in that, that auditorium. There is not a single um, uh, amplification system. It is all natural sound. I was blown away. And so we went to, to see Handel's Messiah as a family. And we happened to be able to sit in a spot very close 
to the entire, the, the, all the singers, the, the musicians, and up on the stage in behind. So we were looking sort of from the side and, and down across, and so we could see and hear everything. Beautiful. And like I say, not a single amplification system. It was all natural sound, and it was just amazing, just the volumes the, 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 the change in volume at different points of this, this beautiful uh, uh, thing that was created by Handel so many years ago. Under the di direction of the concert master, the director, was orchestrating everything. Just beautiful. I want to say this. The Lord is coming for a glorious church, a beautiful church. And this is where, where we need to be at, my dear brothers and sisters. And once again, if you have ought against a brother or sister in the church or whatever, you need to, if you need to go make it right, make it right. That we'd have the right heart and attitude and one of submission to Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit would be able to coordinate and blend us together, each one different and unique, together that there would be a work accomplished, one accord in one place, rushing along in unison. We've been bought by the blood of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're, we've been placed into the body of Christ. Each one of us, different members, put into the body of Christ, and each one doing what it's supposed to in the power of the Holy Spirit by the anointing and the direction of the Holy Spirit at this time, like a truly like a mighty river flowing, bringing life wherever it goes, rivers of living water flowing through us. The Holy Spirit working through us powerfully to bring life to others, a beautiful thing, a glorious church. They were all together in one accord, in one place. Let's just bow our heads at this time. Lord, for those that are listening today that they say, man, I want to be a part of this, I hear it but I have not, I'm not even a part of the body of Christ. Lord, they would make three confessions. Number one, they would confess their sin. Lord, I'm a sinner. Number two, they would make a confession of who you are and what you did for them on the cross 2,000 years ago. Jesus, they would recognize you, Jesus, and that you died for them. You took all their sins upon themselves, upon your, uh, yourself. And Lord, that they can have forgiveness of sins washed, even as they confess their sins to you, Lord, they can be cleansed and washed by your blood. And Lord, that even as they would receive you into their lives, they are born again, born of you, not of the flesh, not of the will of man or blood, but of God, born of God, born again to new life. I pray that they will pray, make that prayer. They will talk to you, Lord God, and they have life eternal. And Lord, I pray at this time for that outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us in these last days. Lord, those that are already filled with your Spirit, fill them again. Lord, those that are, are, are not filled, Lord, fill them with your Spirit. Baptize them that the promise of the Father would be upon them and in them and flowing from them. Lord, in Jesus' name, your Spirit, Holy Spirit, that you would guide us and bring us together in one accord, in one place. Together, in one accord, in one place. Lord, together, in one accord, in one place, let it be. Lord, I just thank you for who you are, Jesus. That you died for us. And I thank you that you have been raised up and you are on the right hand of the Father and all authority is yours. And I thank you for what you have done what you are doing, and what is yet to come. I thank you that we would give you praise. Our lives would give you praise, that you would be exalted. And Lord, that the power of your spirit would flow through us, bringing life.
to those that are around us. Lord, as you work through us and on us and in us, Lord, I just pray this in Jesus' name for the church at this time. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let it be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That as Jesus Christ is lifted up, all would be drawn to him. Shining brightly in the darkness, in Jesus' name, boldly moving forward. Let that be a reality today. And Lord, forgive us where we've done things in our own strength, our own wisdom, our own power. Forgive us, Lord. We submit to your lordship at this time. Let your will, let the will of the Father be done in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. I look forward to when we meet again. Keep, keep informed as listen to the, the announcements as they are uh, regarding moving forward. Um, and uh, let's do the will of God in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us today. If you want to catch some more services, you can click here or here. And also, if you want to watch the whole service, including worship, go to our website, lighthouseniagara.com. Have a great day and God bless.